there is some persistent fake news floating around about the importance of how we dress for presentations, we're going to clear that misinformation up today and look at some things we should keep in mind. Welcome back to year four of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, which we release every Monday. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, your corporate coaching and training guy, master trainer, president of Dale Carnegie Training Japan, and best-selling author of Japan Sales Mastery and Japan Business Mastery. And my new book, Japan Presentations Mastery, is now out on Amazon. We are bringing the show to you from our high performance center in Akasaka in Minatoku, the business center of Tokyo. Why the cutting edge? We are looking at giving you a big edge in business in Japan. Let's all be at the forefront, at the cutting edge of how to flourish here in this market. This is episode number 208, Dress for success when presenting. So today I give my show, so let's get going. There's an old saying about lies, damn lies, and statistics. An often misquoted statistic in the presenting world is that 55% of your impression on an audience is based on how you are dressed. Some coaches are advising on this basis, and it is only partially true. Professor Morabian's research at UCLA did nominate that particular percentage, but he did so with an important caveat. When what we are saying is not congruent or matching with the way we are saying it, then the audience gets distracted and starts focusing on how we addressed 55% of the time. When he published that research, there were no uber powerful thermonuclear distractors like we have today in the form of smartphones. These instruments of presenter attention distraction are rapidly connecting us with the internet and whisking us away from the speaker. If we are doing our job properly as speakers, we will not be losing our audience. One of my team attended a presentation I gave recently, and she reported to me that the audience members were listening to me all the way throughout. That is what I thought too, because the entire speech had me focused like a hawk on my audience to make sure I was holding their attention. I don't mention to say what a smarty pants I am, but just to highlight how difficult it has become for all of us to hold an audience today. My style of presenting is extremely high energy. My karate training background has taught me how to harness my ki or chi and channel it to the audience. I still have pretty good tonal variety so I can really work on keeping the audience with me. The downside of all this is that I generate a lot of heat Often, when we are presenting on stage, there will be spotlights trained on us, and these can make us feel very hot as well. When I'm getting dressed that day, I always make sure of a couple of things for my presentation. A white shirt is an absolute must. I love my blue business shirts, but what I found was the heat generates sweat around the neck area especially when wearing a tie. That lovely light blue shirt can become two-tone. The collar becomes wet and changes to a darker blue. This is distracting for the audience who are sitting there saying to themselves, oh, look at that, he's a two-tone shirt now. The other thing I pay careful attention to is never doing any presenting unless I'm wearing a jacket. 
there are probably few things as unattractive as a speaker wearing only a shirt lifting up their arm to reveal a very sweaty armpit area that runs right down the side of their body. Most unappealing, and again, very distracting to an audience. I keep my jacket on, buttoned up the whole time like a suit of armor. I know that my shirt is soaked during the speech because of all the heat I am generating. It goes without saying that an ill-fitting suit creates a poor impression. The way the collar of the jacket sits on the back of the neck tells you everything. If there's a wide gap between the two, this creates a sense of pattern interrupt, and your audience gets distracted by it. Also, save your bright colored jackets for a party. A bright red jacket works well for a magician, but not so great for a speaker. Always look for ways to make your words conspicuous rather than what you are wearing. Sometimes we are asked to be a speaker on a panel. This can be tricky. We usually set it up on stage in front of the audience, so there is nothing separating us from the viewers. When men cross their legs, if they don't know what they are doing, we get a very unfortunate close-up of their hairy ankles, shins, and calf muscles. Short socks work when you are standing, but are a danger when you sit. I always wear long socks right up to the knee to spare my audience the brutality of my hairy legs. Find out more when we come back from the break. If you want to become a fully competent and confident presenter, then do the High Impact Presentations course. We are all being judged when we speak, be it in the internal team meeting or in a public environment, be it the big bosses, clients, or an industry audience. Everyone is evaluating us. Don't blow it. Get the best training on the planet. Do the High Impact Presentations course now in either Japanese or English. Are you doing business with Japan? Do you really know how things work? Japan Business Mastery provides the answers. Do you have the right networks and know how to create them? Do you know how to get on the same wavelength with Japanese buyers? Do you know what being trustworthy looks like from the Japanese perspective? Japan Business Mastery is based on more than 30 years experience in Japan and will become your go-to guide. Want to succeed in Japan? Buy Japan Business Mastery now. Welcome back. I am quite daring when it comes to wearing bright ties. I leave them home though when I am presenting and select something a bit more muted. Such a bright color sitting right next to your face is bound to be an unwanted competitor for the attention of your audience. I do like pocket squares, but I make sure they are also very discreet. A puffed up large pocket square may be a dandy's delight, but like a bright tie, it sets up competition for the attention of the audience. Be careful with cufflinks too. I have some very bright colors in my lineup, but I go for the less flagrant when I'm presenting. One of my pet peeves in Japan are the number of guys here who wear their tie such that there is a gap between the top of the knot and the top button of the shirt collar. They allow it to loosen off and the gap appears without their knowledge. And again, this is distracting for the viewers. You also come across looking like a kid who can't dress himself properly. I also purposely shorten the length of my ties when I'm presenting. Men's dress rules say the tie should extend to the midway point down on your pants belt. What I find though is that the closed button of a single-breasted suit always has an opening between that button and the bottom of the front of the jacket. The consequence is a tie worn at the correct length 
will actually be peeking out from under the jacket, again, distracting my audience. By making it a little bit too short, the protrusion problem is lessened. Again, I never take off my jacket, so my major tire length faux pas is hidden away. The shine on my shoes should be mirror-like. Standing up on stage, everyone can see your scuffed, down at heel, miserable excuse for shoes. This says slob, poor quality control, or poor self-awareness, pretty clearly. It is not helpful for supporting a professional image. The belt should match the shoes. So brown for brown and black for black. Pretty simple, right? So how could you mess that up? Yet, I see guys with a brown belt and black shoes. This says you are clueless to your audience. So if you can't even get this right, why should we believe anything else you have to say? I also place the name tag holder I'm given by the organizers on the table where I'm sitting or on the lectern. I don't wear them because they are usually plastic and as I move, they catch the lights focused on the stage. Without knowing it, you are sending out Morse code signals every time you move as the plastic flashes the audience. I have only referred to men in this piece on dressing for presenting, but many of the same things for the most part apply for ladies too. I don't have the guts to do a specific commentary on how ladies should dress when presenting. My only hint would be, don't confuse fashion outcomes with presenting outcomes. Make the focus your face rather than the clothes. Don't dress in any way which draws the audience away from looking at your face. Our face is the most powerful tool we have. It is much stronger than whatever is on the screen and our voice. Don't allow anything to compete with it. I hope you enjoyed today's show and so please subscribe on YouTube. Share with your family, friends and colleagues. Become a regular. Hit the little bell icon to receive update notifications. Our website details are on screen now, www.dale-carnegie.co.jp. It's packed with value, so certainly check it out. We try to offer as much value as possible, so you might also enjoy our other shows. In fact, we are releasing content six days a week for podcasts Mondays for the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, Tuesday for the Presentations Japan series, and every second Tuesday for the Business of Tatsujin no Oshie Show, Wednesdays for the Sales Japan series, Thursdays for the Leadership Japan series, and every second Thursday for the Business Pro Podcast Show, Fridays for the Japan Business Mastery Show, and Saturdays for Japan's top business interviews. Now you get these wherever you get your podcasts. Also, every Monday, we release the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. Every second Thursday, we release the Business Pro Telebi Show. And every Friday, the Japan Business Mastery Show. Saturdays, every Saturday, we are releasing Japan's top business interviews. These are all on YouTube. We appreciate your support and please let others know about it so they can benefit too. We want to make a contribution to helping people build their careers and businesses. And so please join with us in that endeavor. In episode number 209, we are talking about buyer style knowledge is key. So yoroshiku onegai tashimasu. Please join me for the next episode of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. We are here to help you. We've only got one direction in mind for you and your business, and that is up.